Uh, this is a very exciting time to be in New York, very exciting time coming from Hong Kong. The umbrella protest, which has finished one chapter, the Occupy chapter, but is starting on a new journey. Uh, in a way, you can look at the umbrella protest or the umbrella revolution, or as we prefer to call it, the umbrella movement, whatever you call it. This is a new and the most recent chapter in Hong Kong's fight for real democracy. And democracy is necessary for Hong Kong because without democracy, the kind of rule of law that we are used to in Hong Kong will not long endure. And all our rights, all our ways of life are preserved, are protected by law. So the rule of law is at the center of all this. Um, the, when you look at the umbrella movement, I belong to the older generation, coming from taking as a starting point the Joint Declaration, which was signed in 1984 as an international treaty protecting one country, two systems, and Hong Kong's way of life. So from then on, we have been working on the basis of the Joint Declaration and the basic law as an uh, embodiment of China's policy promised under the basic law. But the new generation in the protest movement look at things in a much broader way. Uh, they are not looking for someone else to bring into implementation those promises. They are saying we are the generation which has grown up after the handover uh, in 1997. Uh, some of them were only a few years old, but they are looking to a future and they say the future belongs to us. Things have not been going very well. Democracy has been uh, put off again and again. Uh, and we are now going to fight for our future our own way. So for me, it is a very exciting thing. The old generation going out and the new generation coming in with a very strong sense of a Hong Kong identity with the sense that Hong Kong has values, core values, which need to be preserved so that they can have the kind of future they want in that community. Now, Ira asked about Taiwan. I think that it is very interesting to watch the interaction between Taiwan and Hong Kong and how they learn from each other. Um, unfortunately, I'm sad to say that uh, Taiwan basically look at Hong Kong as a very valuable cautionary tale of what not to do. Uh, for example, they say, well, one country, two systems doesn't work. And uh, uh, economic integration with China, you become dependent on China, and that would take away your identity. So they, they're closely interested in Hong Kong as a negative message. But Hong Kong looks to Taiwan very much uh, in, in terms of a positive message, the way Hong Kong people, particularly the young people, fight for their future, uh, the sunflower movement, uh, they learn from Taiwanese uh, um, uh, elections. And, and so there is a very interesting uh, interaction between the two places. And that, that uh, I think that will uh, prove to be a very fertile relationship. Mario, let me just te tease that out a bit. You say this is a struggle that Hong Kong cannot afford to lose, and yet you suggest that there's a fundamental difference of view over the notion of what suffrage means, constitutionalism means. Um, let's be a little bit realistic here. Uh, Hong Kong is very small. Uh, you may not feel that you can afford to lose this one, but let me ask you what you think the prospects are, given the realities of the situation in terms of flexibility on the mainland side, that some accommodation can be reached. We all remember what happened in 1989, and it was the end of political reform in China. That, we hope, will not happen in Hong Kong. So do you see anything, any prospect of working this out apart from the kind of confrontations you're describing. Uh, prospect? Grim. But when the prospect is grim, it doesn't mean that you don't put everything into the fight. And the fight is not just going to be confrontational, it's going to have to be very strategic. Now, I don't believe that Hong Kong is alone in the understanding of the rule of law. In fact, you look across the border, the lawyers for rights are paying much more deeply for their defend, 
their defense of the rule of law. They are paying with it, with their safety, with their personal interests. They're languishing in jails. Their lives are being threatened. They have their lawyer's license taken away from them. Why are they doing this? Because they are convinced that this is the right thing for China not just the right thing for Hong Kong. Of course, we can accommodate. We can say, yes, uh, I'm not completely right, and you're not completely wrong, and let's somehow uh, I'll find a way to live with, with each other. There are things which we should accommodate. For example, shoppers, we should find a way of accommodating. But when it comes to concepts like the rule of law and protection of the rights of individual, that is where the line is drawn. That is where our principle is, because if you compromise on the rule of law, you compromise the future of the Chinese people and not just the future of the people of Hong Kong. So how do we do it? I think there are many ways. And I take the wisdom from a student. And I said, what are you going to do? They, they said, we're going to continue to uh, communicate, we continue to discuss, to educate ourselves. The times are against us now. The situation is against us. But it is not going to be so forever. And if we are ready, when the time comes, when the situation changes, we will be able to achieve something.